Okay. We've all been there, holding that uncomfortable, in an uncomfortable position, holding a stretch, just waiting for the coach to give that word that will release us from that pain. In an article, in the article, pre-exercise stretching and sports-related injuries, knowledge, attitudes, and practices, by Dr. Ramsey Shahab and others, published in the Clinical Journal of Sports Medicine, May 2006, it was reported that in a survey taken by multiple public high schools in the southeast region of Michigan, 95% of coaches strongly agreed that pre-exercise stretching is beneficial, even though there is a lack of evidence to support this notion. Today, I will first talk about the problems associated with pre-exercise stretching. Second, I will talk about the reasons why people stretch before exercising. And third, I will talk about what can you do to solve the problem. First, let's look at the problem. The problem with stretching is that we have always assumed that it is essential for avoiding injury. The recreational athlete can be seen in the park and gym stretching for minutes on end. But studies have shown that this is not necessary and can even be harmful. In a 2004 article, Stretching and Injury Prevention and Obscure Relationship by Eric Witverum, published in the journal Sports Med, it was stated that if people stretch their muscles to be more compliant, they may be less adaptable for their sports activities and consequently affect their, uh, be less efficient during movement. In the book, Female Fitness and Foot, Walking, Jogging, Running, and Orienteering by Bob O'Connell, published in 2002, the author states that studies have found stretching to cause injuries in jogging and slow running activity. Professional athletes are also being affected by this assumption. A stretch to improve performance, <coughs> oh, an assumption of stretching to pro, pro, improve performance. In two different articles published two years apart, it was found that stretching impairs vertical jump height. One of those articles is the Stretching Improved Performance by Ian Schreier, published in the Journal of Sports Med in 2004. The other, holistic stretching increases flexibility and acute vertical jump height when combined with basketball activity by Mandy T. Wollensholm, published in the Journal of Stretch and Conditioning Research in 2006. In another article, this one titled, Acute Effects of Different Stretching Methods on Illinois Agility Test in Soccer Players by Mohamati Koradnasani uh, and others published in the Journal of Stretch and Conditioning, Conditioning Research, 2010. It was stated that there was no significant difference between no stretching, static stretching, dynamic stretching, and a combination of all stretching to improve performance. Also in the article, European College of Sports Science Position Statements, the role of stretching increases in stretching exercise in sports by Peter Mann Johnson and Per Rinstro, published in the European Journal of Sports Science, June 2006, the same observations about vertical jump height impairment was found, but this article also mentioned that articles that suggest that stretching is beneficial include too many interventions in their studies to attribute the reduction of injury to stretching alone. Now that we have addressed the problem, let's look at the cause. The cause of the problem can be blamed on lack of evidence, of information. The most common reason that people stretch is because we have always been told to do so. Some people make stretching part of their exercise routine without asking if the stretch is appropriate. 
The other reason why people stretch is because we have authority figures telling us about the benefits of stretching. As I mentioned before, the coaches in the southeast region of Michigan continue to routinely instruct stretching as a prevention of injury despite the lack of evidence. There are also sports doctors that continue to reference studies that point to the benefits of stretching even though these studies lack a controlled subject. Now that we have, now that we know the problem and the cause, we can work on a solution. The solution to this problem will require the help of all in attendance today. Phase one of this uh, solvency procedure is to write letters to all the necessary sports commissioners. I have taken the liberty of typing a letter that would just require your signature and I will personally mail this letter out to all the necessary sports commissioners. In phase two of this solvency, I declare November 16, 2010, Stretch Awareness Day. To commemorate this day, we will wear rubber bands that will to remind us that just because we can stretch doesn't mean we should. The better thing to do is before exercise is to have some light warm-up exercises. In conclusion, today I have first brought to your attention the problem of pre-exercise stretching. Second, I have talked about the cause, and finally, I have gave you all the opportunity to help solve this problem. Now I want to quote uh, Dr. Stephen Patrick when interviewed by the New York Times in 2004. In the past, scientific and anecdotal reports that stretching does not prevent injury have not changed the cultural patterns of behavior. With that being said, I hope that you will join me in putting a stop to all this unnecessary pre-exercise stretching. Thank you.